Okay, in this section we want to look at empirical formulas and the types of problems that we do with empirical formulas. By definition, an empirical formula is the chemical formula that represents the smallest whole number ratio of the various types of atoms within a compound. This is only going to really apply in a different way to covalently bonded compounds or compounds that contain multiple nonmetals. If you have a metal and nonmetal compound, an ionically bonded compound, it is always put together, with a few rare exceptions, in the simplest ratio. So it's always going to be the empirical formula. But when you have covalently bonded compounds, the two, two or more nonmetals bonded together, you do get cases where it's not the simplest ratio. The empirical formula of that compound would be the simplest ratio of the elements in the compound. Determining the empirical formula from the molecular formula, or the formula that's more complex, is pretty straightforward. So for example, we have three compounds here, C6H12O6, C6H6, and N2O4. The empirical formula of each of these would be the simplest ratio. This is the, known as a molecular formula because it is not the simplest ratio of the elements within the compound. For each of these examples here, we can come up with the empirical formula by taking the ratio, in this case 6 to 12 to 6, dividing it by the uh, smallest number to get the simplest ratio, which in this case would be C H2 O would be the empirical formula. To get to the molecular formula, the more complicated formula, we're actually multiplying the empirical formula by 6. In this case, the empirical formula would be CH. To get to the molecular formula that we started with, we'd be once again multiplying the whole formula by 6. In this case, the empirical formula would be NO2. To get to the molecular formula, would be multiplying by 2. So our three empirical formulas here are the simplest ratios, CH2O, CH, and O2. When you have a more complicated formula, um, such as the ones on the left, known as molecular formulas, you can simplify it down into the empirical formula. Solving empirical formula problems more often, though, comes from the idea of taking a percent composition, like we solved for percent composition at the beginning of this chapter, and working backwards to the empirical formula. This is a three-step process. You take the percent composition and convert that into moles. Then divide each number of moles by the smallest number of moles. And third, based on that ratio, assign the relative number of atoms of each element in the compound. I think this will make a lot more sense if we look at a couple of examples. In this first example, we have a 0.3546 gram sample of vanadium, which is heated in air, it reacts with oxygen, and has a final mass of 0.6330. We want to calculate the empirical formula of vanadium oxide. So I know whenever I'm doing this, I'm going to make columns for each element, so vanadium, and oxygen. I know vanadium in this case is 0.3546 grams. To find oxygen, I'm going to need to take the total mass, 0.6330, subtract the mass of vanadium, and get the mass of the individual uh, oxygen atoms, which would be 0.2784 grams. So take the percent composition or the data that you have and get the grams of the original each element. First step, convert to moles. So from grams, I'm going to use the molar mass to convert to moles. One mole vanadium. Vanadium has a molar mass of 50.94 grams. For oxygen, 0.2784 grams. One mole oxygen, 16 grams. When you do this, for vanadium, you get 0 0.006961 moles. And 
for oxygen, you get 0 0.0174. Or O moles. So that's step one. Convert each into moles. Two, we're going to divide by the smallest one. So in this case, the smallest one is 0 0.06961. So one of them should always come out to one. and one will come out to a larger, lar number larger than one. In this case, we get 2.5. Now, there's no possible way to have a ratio, because the next is to write the empirical formula. You can't have a ratio of one to 2.5. If this were just one and two, I would write a formula of V1O2. But I can't have a ratio of V1, because right now what I would have is V1 O2.5. And I can't have 2.5 as a subscript. So I need to multiply to get this to a whole number. In this case, the simplest whole number that I could get to is 5 by multiplying each of these by 2. So my empirical formula is V2 O5. So the empirical formula is compound V2 O5. You're going to find when we do these problems that the decimal that will come out here, if you get a decimal, will be either 0.5, which means you multiply everything by 2, 0.25.75, which means you multiply everything by 4, or 0.33.66 thirds, which means you multiply everything by 3. And a lot of times it'll just come out to whole numbers, come out to like 2.999, which would round to 3, and we could do a 1 to 3 ratio. But you can't round up from 2.5. Okay, let's look at another example of this. Cobalt metal is mixed with excess sulfur and heated strongly. A sulfide is produced that is 55.06% cobalt and 44.94% sulfur. We want to find the empirical formula. Now in each of these cases, we can treat the percentages as grams because in any of these problems, you could have any total mass of your compound to start with. So if I had 100 grams, 44.94% of 100 is 44.94, 55.06% of 100 is 55.06. So if I make it out of 100 grams, I can just use the percentages as grams. Now what I would do is recommend that you pause the video, try this problem, and then press play again and see my answer. Okay, cobalt, we're going to go to moles, step one. One mole of cobalt is 58.93 grams. One mole of sulfur is 32.0 seven grams. So I need to divide each of these to get the moles. I get 0.9343 moles here. And I get 1.40 one moles here. Now I want to take and divide each by the smallest one, 0.9343 divided by 0.9343, which will come out to 1. 1.401 divided by 0.9343. When I do that, I get 1.5. Once again, I have a ratio that's not whole numbers. To make these whole numbers, I need to multiply both by 2. So CO2S3 would be my empirical formula. So you can do this with more than two elements, and it would just be done the same way. You would just divide each by the smallest one of whichever however many elements you have and come up with that ratio. 
And you will see cases like this where you do not get whole number ratios when you need to multiply all the ratio by a number to make sure they're all whole numbers.